Stay tuned for your weekly news review on STVS. Good evening and welcome to the news review in English. I'm Susan Maynard. The Foundation National Slavery Monument, Suriname, strives since 2012 for a powerful memorial of slavery on a central place in the capital of Suriname. The monument will stand near the Independence Square. The artist, Erwin de Vries, is asked to make a design by analogy of a similar monument in the city of Amsterdam, Netherlands. The design is already finished, but the financing request of 1 million Surinamese dollars directed to the Surinamese government is not yet accepted. According to Erwin de Vries, a decision should be taken at the end of February 2013. The monument must be unveiled, preferably before July 1, 2013, the jubilee celebration of 150 years emancipation. The monument of bronze will stand 12 meters high. The young dropouts who are in the guidance of the Rumas Foundation get a private education center. In the presence of the First Lady, Ingrid Bouterse Waldring, and other dignitaries, the Rumas Educational and Motivation Center, REMC, was officially put into use on Friday, 15th of February. Emmy Hart, director of RUMAS, indicates that she owes this center to the perseverance and support from the government. According to Ms. Hart, dropouts should take example from that because with perseverance this goal has been reached. In cooperation with Aganar of the Americas, 25 dropouts will be trained for seven months. The realization of the center has, according to Mrs. Hart, entirely been dependent on the players who realize the essence of the training of dropouts. She is grateful to the donors for this. This center will focus on catering, learning, defense and control techniques, electro construction and welded construction. The 25 young people already know for which of the available training courses they will choose and welcome the initiative of Stichting Rumas. The target group was addressed by the First Lady, Ingrid Bouterse Waldring. She gave them, on behalf of the President, a baggage of motivation. The next challenge for RUMAS Foundation is to realize its own private outdoor sports and recreation resort. For this, the Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs, Ismanto Atna, made some promises. Dominique Pluvier regional director of World Wildlife Fund, WWF, presented a check for 70,000 U.S. dollars to the Minister of Spatial Planning of Land and Forest Management at Ohe Bay. Over 40 years, the WWF supported the protection of sea turtles in Suriname. The minister of Eroge Bay, Guimardo Cromosuto, was pleased with the gesture. He says the money will specifically be used to protect the sea turtles in Suriname. Mr. Pluvier says he's happy with the contribution that this organization has done so far in Suriname. He added that there's good legislation in Suriname regarding the protection of animals. Only the enforcing of the legislation is still a problem. The organization will continue its efforts to support the Surinamese government and the community, said Pluvier, finally. In a meeting with President Desiree Bouterse, the trade union movement and the business community have called for a social security system and the introduction of a minimum wage in Suriname. On Saturday, February 16th, the head of state had a tripartite consultation with the various players. Vice President Robert Amirali, Minister of Labor, Technological Development and Environment, Michael Miskin, and representatives of the business community were also present at the meeting. 
both Ronald Hoogaert, president of the Trade Union Federation, CLO, and his colleague of C47, Robbie Berenstein, were happy that the president had invited them for such talks. They call for the minimum wage, proper medical care, and a good working relationship. Also, Kenneth Fasseur, director of the NV Energy Company of Suriname, ABS, had a meeting with the president. He had not much to say to the press about the meeting, but that problems within the company were discussed. President Balderse indicates that the security system and the setting of a minimum wage are difficult issues. Therefore, he had invited stakeholders to exchange views on how these issues can be addressed quickly and well. The direction in which this matter should develop has yet to be projected, the head of state says. The region top of the Lions has donated a Braille printer to the National Foundation for the Care of the Blinds in Suriname. In the region top, all lion clubs in Suriname are represented. Rudolf Augustin, region chairperson, says that the cooperation goes back until the creation of the institute. They have a long relationship with the foundation and they often give donations to them. Mr. Augustine stresses that other institutions and organizations are also remembered. Natasha Habibi Ahart, director of the foundation, speaks of a very special moment because there is a great need for such a printer. In the future, the organization wants to produce information sheets for its target group in Braya. The Ministry of Public Works is working on the structure addressing of the flooding. Fijay Chotkan, advisor to the Ministry of Public Works, points out that man is the biggest culprit when it comes to the blockage of the drainage system. Due to this, the different drainage systems can process the excess water after a large rainfall. The Sommelsdijk's Creek is one of the many places known as a bad drainage. Because of illegal constructions on the maintenance strip of the Ministry of Public Works, it is not possible to optimally deepen the creek. Mr. Chopkan admits that the control needs to be tightened up, but he does emphasize that together with the different players, the clogging of gutters and other water systems must be prevented. Several people in town are happy that the main roads in the city are not underwater after the heavy rains last weekend. The advisor of the Ministry of Public Works says that the town can be considered as a model project for the neighborhoods which still have to contend with flooding. The ministry is hoping for a good cooperation with the local residents who suffer of excess water or blocked gutters. The villages of Makambi, Kaju, Jankakondre, and Wakibasu 1, heavy gusts caused lots of damage on February 18th. More than 10 homes, one recreation room, and kitchens in the backyards are affected. There were no casualties, but many have a feeling of anxiety. Members of the district council, MPs, and others showed interest. The National Disaster Management Council, along with the local community, provided assistance on Monday. But still, the government is asked for further guidance and to finally start up information in case such calamities occur. As far as we know, gusts have resulted in damages in the coastal strip. However, it is the first time this has occurred in this specific area. The financial and legal positioning for the judiciary is of insufficient quality. Dinesh Seuratan, magistrate at the registry of the district courts, shared this with the audience at the installation of the acting substitute prosecutors. Wednesday, the eight acting substitute prosecutors were installed by the district judge, Dinesh Seuratan. He knew that the valuation of judges and officers are are not proportional to the years of follow-up study. Also, does this five-year study accompanied by sacrifice and risk-taking just to be able to hold the position as magistrate? With this, 
tasks and responsibilities go hand in hand. Hence, the district judge gave the new substitute officers that the judiciary is having an underdog position. Within the Trias Politica, all three powers are equal to each other, but in practice, it seems different. However, Judge Seuratan told them not to give up. Not everyone can be a magistrate. Despite the understaffing, low financial and logistical appreciation, the Court of Justice brings improvement to the legal position of the total judiciary. After the heavy understaffing at the office of the prosecutor, the court has now 16 magistrates. Young people today are sexually active at a very young age. This makes the risk of adolescent pregnancy bigger, explains Glenn Lecky, the director of Stichting Lobby. The director of Stichting Lobby also indicates that adolescent pregnancy not only results in physical disadvantages, but also gives the teenage mothers problems with their parents and grandparents. Mr. Lecky says further that the society concentrates only on the pregnant girls. And if the youth wants to use birth control, it's not recommended by the parents. Mr. Lecky also finds that society is stimulating early sex through music and video images in which many sexuality is being promoted. Lecky's advice is that it has to be accepted that young people are sexually active at an early age. He also pointed out that more than half of the youth who comes for birth control at Sichting Lobby is younger than 25 years. That concludes our news review in English. For more information, you can visit us at www.stvs.sr. I'm Susan Maynard.